Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. We're working every day, many of us. And do you say this to yourself? I should be making more money. I'm worth more. I deserve more. But it's just not happening. Or maybe... Maybe you have opportunity, but you're afraid to take that opportunity because success maybe challenges you or you have a fear of success. It's all about the money mindset, and we're going to dig into that today. I think there's going to be quite a few revelations that come along with that. And let's get you in a successful mode with a certified coach in both health and life mastery. She's all part of your transformation. She's got decades of working with people, especially in the HR world, which really helps her with a holistic approach to coaching and helping people move along to their full potential. She is Dominique Bigras, and she joins us once again. Welcome, Dominique. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I hear this a lot from friends, and I heard it recently as well about People and their success. Mm -hmm. Is it all about the mindset? If if we have the right mindset, can we make the money that we think we should be making or uh, we think we deserve? Absolutely. And you know what? I love this topic because money mindset is, it's everywhere. It's the thing that is so everywhere that we absolutely don't see it anymore. And therefore, we're not aware of it. We're not aware aware of where it is, and we're not aware of the impact it has on our life because we just, we're in it all the time. So it, it has become invisible to us. And of course, it ties up with the career. Yeah, definitely, because if you have any, and I mean any, challenges with self-confidence in your work or in your abilities to sell yourself or to sell your worth, that's where rubber is going to hit the road. If you feel that, oh, yeah, you're you're pretty confident and, you know, it's all right, but ah, you've hit the ceiling. You, You can't get through. Well, that means that it's the money mindset that is not up to par, where it should be for you to get through that block. What, and, what do we yeah. mean by that? that? That money mindset, what, what exactly does it mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy you asked, because it starts when we're so young. <laughs> we're surrounded by money all the time. And how we envision money and how we relate to money, having, not having, um, it, it's, that's really what we, we call money mindset. And um, it starts from a very, very young age. I remember when I was a little kid, you know, way too young to understand numbers and stuff. Um, I used to watch my, my parents. Um, you know, pay out at the grocery and, and, and shops. And I had no notion of number, even less money. <laughs> you know, so when I saw them getting the paper out, at the time it was paper, <laughs> and getting the change back, I absolutely didn't understand that it was change or it was money. I, for me, it was like I was so young, it was like sharing your toy. So it was a particular type of toy that grown up seem to care about, that money, that paper thing, and they would exchange, you know, some different colors and get some other from the different colors. And for me, it was that it was like sharing your toys. So it was just something that grown up would do to be polite. <laughs> and I was shocked the first time I realized that no change came back. So... I asked my dad, I said, why did the person didn't give you anything back? Because for me, it was really more of an exchange. You know, I lend you my toys, you lend me yours, <laughs> and that's it. And he was like, well, because the, the, the count was right, there was no change to give back. And I was like, what? 
<laughs> for me, it didn't make sense. And that was the first time, and, and then he explained it to me, but that was the first time I got acquainted with the notion of money, that you have to pay something in order to get something. Hmm. And from, from now on, then, you know, it, it builds up and it, it becomes an environment. But just to say that it's something that is there, at an age that we're so young, we don't understand the world. So when we grow up, we pick up all those views about what does it mean to have money? What does it mean not to have money? Each time your parent will say, because you want a candy or a toy or something, oh, we don't have money for that. That's totally okay, because <laughs> you don't want to buy anything and everything. But what does the young understand from that? You know, it can build up a scarcity mindset and not really understanding the weight of we're making choices, we do have priorities and so on and so forth, it can go to the simple expression of, okay, money is hard to come by or when your parents will say, money doesn't grow in trees. That's, that's other things that as kids we register and we say, okay, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. You have to work hard, it's difficult to get, and so on, and so forth. And when we're grown up, we carry that mindset, then that relationship to money, that it's something that it's hard to get, that it's difficult. Hmm. So you have to be even more worthy of it, because otherwise, why would you have it? And <laughs> that's where it can become difficult then to say, you know what, I'm worth it. I'm going to ask X, Y, Z because I know this is what is worth on the market. Why should I undersell myself and we're confident to move on or to get that promotion? Because sometimes it's not the task by itself or we feel that we do have the competency or a decent amount of competency for that promotion that we're targeting. That's not where it, the, 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 the lack is. It's when we think about the salary and we feel, oh, my God, <laughs> this is so much more. Will I be able to deliver something that is worth that? Will my performance be up to par with the price tag? And that's, again, that relationship to money mm. that is playing in. Wow. And there, there's, a lot yeah. going, there's a lot going on here. Like, for example... To your point, Dominique, I I have a friend who is a single mom, and she mm -hmm. is wonderful. She's always helping others. She does a lot of charitable work, but she doesn't. She feels she doesn't make enough money, and she mm -hmm. said, "You know, I need to make. I can need a new car. I need this." And I believe that just what you said. It goes back to her childhood when. Her parents, her mother would say just what you said, you know, money doesn't go on trees. And then, then her ex, I believe, used to impart that in her mind that mm -hmm. money can be scarce. Watch what you spend. Be careful. So mm -hmm. they say that what you think becomes your reality. If you're thinking that you can't make money, you're not going to. You're not going to have the abundance. And then on the flip side, I spoke to a man who's part of a group I'm in. And he, like, you look at him, he's like Tom Cruise. Like, he should be super <laughs> successful. Like, he just, he's got every, it looks like he's got everything he needs to succeed. And he recently admitted that he's not moving it forward like he, he feels he should because he's almost afraid of the success. Like, what's, what's going to uh -huh. happen if I nail it well? Uh, is it going to change me? It's the, are the dynamics of my life going to change? And he yeah. thinks that he's almost self-sabotaging himself in some regards. Um, yeah. What do you? What are your thoughts on all of that? Uh, yeah, when you said self-sabotage, I think that's exactly the right word. You you totally nailed it because sometimes when we're fearful of being changed by the money situation. And that's another relationship that we have with money. Mm. You know, the fact that, oh, money changes you. What if once I've changed, people don't like me anymore? What if people judge me 
because of my wealth, you know, mm. and I end up disappointing people I love, my friends, my family, um, and it, it can be all sorts of things around that. Um, so it's, um, it's something that we need to deconstruct. To realize that money is a tool, but it's not who you are, and it's not an indication of your worth. And that's very difficult to do, by the way, because we're conditioned to, by everything in our society, to judge success and worth by how much money does it bring. A business is successful, it has a lot of money, it makes a lot of money. Uh, someone is successful, they make a lot of money. Um, I'm, I'm giving you an example. <laughs> I had a friend who told me about a, a, a funny encounter. Uh, she was at the, on the beach with her kids, and there was someone, not very put together, <laughs> let's put it that way, who was walking on the beach uh, with, you know, jeans uh, with holes and uh, the hair around, like, really a bit weird. And she was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is probably someone who lives on the street. She was like, okay, kids, you know, don't, don't make a fuss about the guy. And um, it, it looked a bit shitty. Until the guy went to a Ferrari and got in the Ferrari. And then she was like, oh, probably I saw a celebrity. So that mindset, we judge and we put a situation or a context around someone just because of what we think about the money they may or may not do. And it was the same person that looked the same way, but it went from someone living on the street to, oh my gosh, I may have seen a celebrity. <laughs> hmm. So it's something that we do and we don't even realize it. And that's why it's so difficult to unpack the money mindset because we, we first have to be aware of our own relationship to it because we all do have one and it's more complex than just, oh, money is good, money is bad. It's like, like you said, you know, the, the, the person who was super successful and had, well, had everything to be super successful but hit a wall. Um, there's, Many of us that do that at some point where the price tag may be different, but up to a point, is it going to be a six figure? Is it going to be a quarter of a million, half a million, a million? It doesn't matter. The principle is the same, that at some point we think that it's too much, for whatever reason, we're not going to be able to cross that threshold without having a negative impact on ourselves, whether it's us changing or people changing around us. We may have fear that we're going to get judged. Uh, we're going to be seen hmm. as someone who may have done something not, not that honest to end up with so much money. <laughs> right. Well, what about examples of what our mindset should change to? Let's say that we are, we, we feel that we should be making more money. It's not happening. Um, what, what should be, I guess, is it, is, it, is it also manifesting in some regards? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly, we are making a reality of what we think the circumstances are. So if we want the circumstances to change, we have to work on ourselves first of changing our own perception. And it starts with being aware, for, for one, of what, what kind of tag we give money. Is it something that is good, that is medium? Is it something that we're afraid of? Um, and there's no right or wrong answer it's really looking at our self curiosity rather than judgment. Because judgment doesn't lead anywhere, for one, and it, it's going to block the work. So curiosity is, is like if you were inquiring about 
you're visiting another country and you're inquiring about how people live, how they make a living, it, it would be that kind of curiosity, just open mind and looking at our own way of relating to money without saying, oh, I shouldn't think like that. That's for one. And realizing that money is, is like energy. It flows. It flows to us, and it flows from us. Hmm. And the flow we give it, the meaning we give it, is really its own choice. We have that power. And no matter how much money we may have or not have, we each have that power to change the flow to a positive flow from what's coming from us and when we release it in the world. Because money is made to circulate. <laughs> it's not made to be stagnant, if it makes sense. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I want to ask you a question about that. So, like gratitude, let's talk about gratitude. Yeah. It's been said, and maybe we've talked about it before as well, that you need to express gratitude. You want good things in your life. You need to show that you appreciate those good things in life. So that being said, when you do that, the good things come back to you. Not that you should mm -hmm. be doing it for that reason, but that's kind of the way, you know, the law of attraction or the universe works. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've been told before that if you want to have abundance, you need to provide abundance. Like, for example, you know, somebody does a free service for you. Yeah, I'm going to help you. I'm going to do something. I've had, a, I've had somebody do a energy clearing on me. And she mm -hmm. has said before, for the energy to work and the flow to be right, she goes, there has to be an exchange. So... She said, just Venmo me a dollar. It's okay. That's it. You know, no charge. <laughs> I'm not charging you, but, but for it to work, you need to provide, you know, one way. And that's how it works the other way. She provided, you know, a service as a, as a favor. Um, what are your, what are your overall, overall thoughts on all of that? Mm -hmm. I like that because it shows how wealth can manifest in different ways. Mm. We're conditioned to think that money is our only form of wealth. But that's far from true. Mm. We have talents. We have friendship. We have resources. All of those things that are not necessarily money or um, can manifest in different types of ways, collaboration is definitely a type of wealth because it produces something. It brings you somewhere. And... When we realize that we're stuck in a rat race for more, 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 for the sake of more, 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 <laughs> but not necessarily knowing what to do with the more, 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 or just getting crushed under the weight of more, 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 when you realize that we live in a, a world of sufficiency, nature will give you what you need, no more, no less. Mm. It's, it's sufficiency. So when you realize that you actually are more wealthy than you notice for, for one, well, then you start to appreciate what you have. Because why would you have more if you don't appreciate what you already have? And that's where the gratitude kicks in, too. Because then you realize what you have in terms of, of the home, what's in it, the people who live in it who surrounds you, your community, and it started to have another sense of purpose. I often say to, to people who are worried about not having enough or um, that I used to live out of a suitcase when I was at Cirque touring, all of my possessions fit it in a suitcase. I'm not saying that everybody should do that. <laughs> And certainly right now, if you were to take away my car, I swear to God, I'm going to curl <laughs> on the floor in the ball and cry my life. Don't take away my car. But <laughs> just yep. saying that we don't need that much. We want a lot, but we don't need that much. And therefore, when you realize that your real needs are easily met, or more easily than we thought, then it frees us 
it frees us because the fear is of, of missing out, not being enough, because when you fear of not having enough, oftentimes you fear not being enough. It it's just goes hand with one with the other. When you tackle one, you're going to work on the other automatically. So when you realize that your needs are more frugal, more simple than you thought, it frees you to appreciate all of the extra in a new way. And it helps you also to take a step back and look, okay, I'm in a rat race for X, Y, Z. Does that bring me pleasure? Is it fulfilling? That's the first question that we should ask ourselves. If it's just I'm running after another car, a deeper pool, a bigger house, mm. just for the sake of the bigger house and the newer car, it doesn't bring you any joy. So why doing it? Do something else with your money. So it's not necessarily, um, it, it's really the flow of money that I was talking about earlier. Give a meaning to that flow of the money that flows from you to whatever else and it will bring you back. So if what brings you joy is to contribute to your community, then, you know, it's a way that will be more constructive. You're giving out. You will sure get back. You will get back in gratitude, in sense of accomplishment, of purpose, of fulfillment, and it goes on and on. And it's a virtuous circle that nourishes itself. And afterwards, after a while, realizing that you are not just evaluating yourself out of your money wealth, but really out of your overall holistic wealth in terms of your talents, your abilities, and what you can contribute in the world in any way possible. You know, in time, it's not just money. It can be time. It can be other ways. But it's a contribution that you, you give out, and it enriches your life. And that also helps transforming the money mindset because then it becomes more global, and you realize that it's a, it's a, it's a part in a, a bigger a bigger world, if I can say. I love, I love all of that, and it, it makes it makes you wonder too, because I, I'm, I'm on your page, that we think we need things, but we really don't, mm -hmm. and you don't realize that until you scale your life down to the point where, well, let's say you're in transition, life change, you move, you downsize, mm -hmm. and then you realize you got rid of all this stuff. I don't really need it. I'm good. I could, you know, <laughs> I look at it this way. And I don't want, I don't want to, you know, manifest this, although maybe, uh, like I could be maybe happy on a, on a, a little shack on a beach in the Caribbean, you know, um, selling coconuts. That might be okay. Making people happy on their vacation, whatever it might be. Um, mm -hmm. It's funny how we look at it that, well, you know, in one in one aspect we're saying that we we should we should feel that we deserve certain things but then on the other side we're saying that yeah do you really need them though you know do mm -hmm. do you really need it that's that's the question but it, what it really sounds like here is is manifestation manifesting what you what you think you want or what what you think you deserve does that does that sound right yeah absolutely bringing clarity to what we really want is uh with the awareness of, of our relationship with money, then we can bring clarity to, is it really what I want? And if not, what do I need to change? Who do I need to be to get what I want and to make it happen money-wise too? Because it's going to be attached with maybe uh, some work, with um, volunteering, regardless. It can be, uh, money can come and go in so many ways. <laughs> yes, yeah. But definitely looking at ourselves first and bringing clarity to our goals and then manifesting it by taking an action. 
Well, I can wholeheartedly say to you, Dominique, that if I made mistakes in my life, and they're all lessons to be learned, I would say one of the top three would be worrying about money. I used to worry about it when there was no reason to worry about it because it was it was fear of the future. Well, what about if this goes away? Or, you know, if you have three jobs, oh, what about yeah. if you lose one of those jobs? And what, what what's going to happen? Instead of just savoring the moment, you know, we mm-hmm. look ahead. And uh, and I did. I did when I was uh, yeah, younger. Not that much younger, though. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I will say it was a, a lesson to be learned. I'm not going to call it a mistake, but it was a lesson to be learned um, that, the universe will provide you what you need if you have the right mindset. How to get that mindset? Well, you know, it's somebody like you that, that can help us along with that. How does, how does somebody find you, Dominique? Uh, so they can visit my website at Dominique by Grass. So it's spelled by Grass. D, uh, so Dominique, D-O-M-I-N-I-Q-U-E-B-I-G-R-A-S dot com. Or they can write to me at info at DominiqueBiograss.com. Excellent. And even just starting the conversation, if this resonates with you on the coaching side, I know that you have many different programs. And you know, when we talk about the, you know, the money side, you decades, literally decades as an HR professional. So you've seen all of it and now you're coaching people through it. Actually, you were coaching people during the HR thing. You just didn't know you were doing it, I think. Uh, <laughs> but just, you know, fantastic career with purpose and uh, appreciate all your insight today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. And we'll, we'll catch up soon. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.